Hello viewers, my name is Mr. Kazim and I am delighted to welcome you to my YouTube channel at Smart Edu TV. Here you will find detailed tutorials on your science courses and tips on how to answer examination questions successfully. I started this channel to also share my knowledge and experience in this field and to give you tips on how to succeed as a university student. If you are looking for detailed tutorials on physics subjects, chemistry, mathematics, biology, statistics, and the general studies, GST, then you have come to the right channel. So therefore, sit back, relax, and join me on this journey. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to never miss on an important update. Please remember to also share this video so that others can benefit. Thank you very much. Okay, so the next thing we look at in our experimental physics is compound error. Compound error. So we want to see how we analyze error. We want to see how we treat each of the errors, either in terms of addition or subtraction, or in terms of multiplication or division, or in terms of constant power. So let's see how we want to do that. So the first one we are going to be looking at under compound error is the case of addition or subtraction. Addition or subtraction. Given that, given that P equals X plus Y. Given that P equals X plus Y. From here, the maximum error in P denoted by del P. Maximum error in P is given as the error in X plus the error in y. This is how we evaluate the maximum error in p in terms of addition. Similarly, similarly, in terms of subtraction, in terms of subtraction, we are going to have if p equals x minus y, we are going to have error in P to be equal to error in X, maximum error in X, minus error in plus error in what, Y. What do we notice here? Either it is addition or subtraction. We notice that errors are always added, irrespective of being addition or subtraction. We always add error in experimental physics. Please take note of that. We don't subtract errors. Errors are always added. Let's see an example of this. Example. So let's take this example so that we understand what we are trying to say perfectly well. Example. The internal and external diameter of a metal pipe. The internal and external diameter of a metal pipe is defined as the internal and external diameter of a metal pipe is defined as D1 equals 33 plus or minus 1 millimeters and D2 diameter 2 is defined as 45 plus or minus 2 millimeters. We are given the D1 and D2. So from there, we are going to calculate the percentage error in the thickness of the pipe. Calculate the percentage error in the thickness of the pipe. How do we calculate the percentage error in the thickness of the pipe given the first pipe the diameter of the first pipe, D1, to be this, 
and the diameter of the second part d2 to be this so i want to calculate the percentage error in the thickness of the pipe the first thing i need the thickness of that pipe how do i get thickness thickness of the pipe is given as the difference in the diameters that is the higher diameter minus lower diameter that is d2 minus d1 which will give us so from here please take note of these values look at the first diameter d1 i'm having 33 plus or minus one millimeters each of these terms they have their words meaning in the first one here is the actual value of that diameter one. Why this other value is the word error that is associated to diameter one. Similarly, for diameter two, this first five here is the actual value of the diameter two. Why plus or minus two, this two here is the error that is associated to diameter two. So for us to get the thickness, it means the actual thickness, the diameter 2, which is what? 45 millimeters minus diameter 1, which is what? 33 millimeters. So, so what is 45 minus 33 millimeters? This will give us what? 12 millimeters. So this is what? The thickness of that pipe. This is the thickness of that word pipe. Now, we want to calculate what the what percentage error in thickness. Since I'm putting the, what, the actual value of the thickness to be what 12 millimeters. And also, I need to calculate the error in the thickness of what of that pipe. From the first value, I got the what the actual value of the thickness. So from this second value here that is associated to the error. I can use it to get what the error in what in that thickness. That is the error in thickness. The error in what the thickness of the pipe will give us the error what in the first one plus the error in what the second one. That is error in diameter one plus error in diameter two. What is my error in diameter 1? My error in diameter 1 is what? 1. Plus, what is error in what? In diameter 2. The error in diameter 2 is what? 2. 1 plus 2 will give us 3. So we have 3 millimeters. So that means the actual value of the thickness is 12 millimeters. Why the error that is associated to that thickness is 3 millimeters? So from there, we can now calculate our percentage error. Therefore, therefore, the percentage error in the thickness of the pipe, the percentage error is given by the formula error over actual value multiplied by 100%. The error that we've got in over the actual value multiplied by what? 100%. This will give us what is our error? Our error is 3 over the actual value is what? 12 multiplied by 100%. And this will give us 25%. So 25% is the percentage error that is associated to the thickness of that part. Is that clear? Okay, so we move to the second one. We move to the second one. We look at the case of addition or subtraction. And what we notice? We notice that either addition or it is subtraction, errors are always added. In experimental physics, we don't subtract error. Errors are always added. So let's now see what happens in case of what multiplication. Let's see what happens in case of multiplication. So case two, let's say product or multiplication. Given that P equals the product of X and Y. Given that P equals the product of X and what Y. The maximum error in P is defined as 
error in P over actual value of P equals error in X over actual value of X plus error in Y over the actual value of Y. This we how we what evaluate the maximum error in P in terms of products or multiplication. Please take note of this. This is quite different from the first one. In terms of addition or subtraction, I don't want to include this. But in terms of products or multiplication, you can see I'm looking, I'm including what the actual value. Please let's take note of that. So this is how we calculate the maximum error in P. Similarly, the standard error in P, if I want to calculate the standard error in P in terms of multiplication, it simply means that I should square each of these terms. That is, the standard error in P. The standard error in P can be given as error in P over actual value of P all squared equals error in X over actual value of X all squared plus error in Y over actual value of Y all squared. This is how we calculate the standard error in P. In which, at the end of the day, if I square these guys so that this P square can go to the other side, so that error in P square will give us the whole of this with P. In which, for you to remove the square, I can now find the square root of both sides. In such case, I'm going to be left with something like this. I will be left with some, the standard error in P equals square root of square root of the first one. I'm going to have error in x over actual value of x all squared plus error in y over actual value of y all squared. Don't forget everything is multiplying. Multiplying what? When this goes to the other side, becomes what? P squared. Multiplying what? P squared. So this is how we evaluate the standard error in P. In terms of what? Product or multiplication. Is that understood? Okay. So we see how what? How we how we deal with the standard error and the maximum error in terms of what product or multiplication. So this next the next one we look at is how do we evaluate this if they are what the quotient or division. How do we evaluate the maximum error in what in P if they are what quotient? Let's see how we do that quickly. So number three, let me clean this. Number three, quotient. So let's see how what evaluates P if they are what quotient. Given that, given that P equals x over y. Given that P equals x over what y. My maximum error in P denoted by error in P over actual value of what P is given as error in x over actual value of x plus error in y over actual value of what y. Again, what do we notice? In terms of quotient or division, we don't divide error, rather we add error. Please take note, we don't subtract error, we also don't divide error, rather errors are always added together. Either they are subtraction, either they are what? Multiplication, or either they are what? Division. We don't subtract error, we don't divide error. Errors are always added together. Is that clear? Okay? So this is what the maximum error in P. Similarly, the standard error in terms of what? Quotient is also given as error in P over actual value of P all squared equals error in X over actual value of X all squared plus 
error in y over actual value of y all squared. This is how we evaluate the standard error in p in terms of what quotient, which is similar to what we have in terms of what products. Please, let's take note of that. So let's look at one or two examples under this so that we understand what we are trying to say clearly. Cut.